this great United States of ours. But I can promise you, there is no finer Allstate in America than there is sitting on this stage right now, right here now. Uh, before we tell you just briefly about that piece, I've got just a couple of quick thank yous. Again, I would like to thank Tom Walters, his entire staff, the entire MBA, Mark Kerouac, all my dear friends here. I want to thank them for the great work they're doing here in the state of Massachusetts. I particularly also would like to thank our band managers, Michael Smith and James Thomas. This was a seamless experience. I could ask for nothing more. And that's the highest compliment I can possibly give. Our program this afternoon is entitled Symphony Number no. Three, Don Quixote. I uh, had the distinct honor of traveling to Spain a few years ago uh, and had received a commission from a group in Spain. Uh, the little town, the little seaside village, was called Denia. It's just south of Valencia. Now they said, Mr. Smith, we know you've written some symphonies regarding literature. Would you be interested in writing something about the great Spanish work, Don Quixote? Of course I was very, very interested. But they said, you know, there's, there's one twist to this. We want you to write it on Spanish soil. And so it was a... As I say in the music business, it was a tough gig, but somebody had to do it. <laughs> so I went to Spain for two months. They gave me a beautiful apartment right on the Mediterranean Sea in this little seaside community of Denia, just south of Valencia, and I wrote. Now, what was significant about Denia, however, as you may remember, Cervantes. Cervantes was jailed in Algiers. And while he was in jail, he decided to occupy his mind by writing and beginning the story of Don Quixote a story that has lasted for centuries. In fact, Spain has just celebrated the 400th anniversary of the publication of this great work. As he left Algiers and sailed across the Mediterranean, he <coughs> landed at the port of Dinia, exactly where I was staying. In fact, the Cervantes Esplanade is right there. And uh, what a spectacular place it is. So I lived there for two months. The group, the band in Dinia that commissioned the work, Quite frankly, even the, the, the gentleman who owns the inn where a lot of the story takes place now has been in his family for many centuries. He plays double bass in the band in Dinya. I got to walk the walk. I got to go to La Mancha, which is only an hour from Dinya. I got to fight the windmills. I got to go to the mission. I got to go to the inn. So I feel like I've walked in Don Quixote's shoes. Now, why Don Quixote? 400 years. Think about this. Don Quixote was a 50-year-old gentleman from La Mancha. He was really into his books. His farm was rather dilapidated because he spent all his money on books. He was really fascinated with the idea of chivalry and all that is right with the world. He went just a little insane. Just a bit and decided that he had to go upon his own quest and go out and right all the wrongs that are in the world and, and do every noble deed that was absolutely possible. Now just imagine, he, he, was, a, he was a knight, but he, he needed a squire, so he grabbed this gentleman by the name of Sancho Panza, became his trusty squire. They had to suit him up in, in a suit of armor. They found a rusty old suit of armor. They put it on him. It didn't fit very well. He didn't even have a helmet, so the first one he did, he made out of paper mache. And he put it on his head and said, here, Sancho, take this sword and check and see if this will work. And of course, Sancho did this, and it split the paper mache helmet in half, and that didn't work. So what did he do? He put a kitchen pot on his head and started riding the roads of Spain. He went on multiple quests. From there, he had so many adventures, some comedic, some tragic. He celebrated the feminine ideal. He fell in love with a barmaid, but in his mind, she was the queen, Dulcinea, the most beautiful woman in the world. He went out and had iconic adventures. 
He fought windmills, perhaps the best known. Imagine jousting a windmill. Here we go, all of a sudden your lance pierces the blade of that windmill. It throws you way up in the air and you fall. I wonder what that armor sounded like when he hit the ground. The clanking of metal. He finally, at the end of his adventure, returned home, finally to La Mancha. He realized, I have been just a bit insane. And I'm now back to reality. He was illuminated. And there at the end of his life, he gathered his very few friends around him, reflected on his life, and then went and made that final trip to illumination in the skies above. Symphony number three is in four movements. The first is entitled The Quest. Listen to the quest, you'll hear everything from his trusty steed, Rosinante, the kind of uh, uh, offbeat tilter of the hooves hitting the ground. You'll hear the dementia in his head with the metallic percussion and the dissonance. The second movement is a bolero. It's a bolero that's a little fractured, and it's entitled Dulcinea. The third movement is Sancho and the windmills. You'll hear Sancho, the donkey, the burro, You'll actually hear him fight the window and hear exactly what happened. The final movement is entitled The Illumination. I hope you enjoy this performance of Symphony Number no. 3, Don Quixote, as much as I'm going to enjoy sharing the stage with these very, very fine musicians.
David, wave your arms. You can get him. You got to look over here right now. He's looking. Hold on, one more try. He's gonna look again, and no. 